Hi everyone, so for this lesson we're going to do, I'd like you to get on my website so you can download the note we're going to take up and the worksheet. So I'm on Google here, I'm just going to show you what you would Google. Mr. Kimball Google site, and several options come up. You're in the grade 10 academic. Click there, okay, there's menus here on the left, we're in unit 6 trigonometry. In this particular lesson, it falls to be under the following. Okay, so it's Wednesday, January 13th, solving trigonometry applications by using trig ratios, sine law, or cosine law. Okay, I'm making the video now, so the link will be up soon. And here's the handout. So if you click here, there's the handout you'll want to print off to work with. And also, we'll take up some of the questions from the worksheet that goes with it. All right, so pause the video, print these off, see you in a sec. Okay, let's quickly take up the note, and then we'll move into some examples where we decide which trig approach to take. Um, so here's the note. Pythagorean theorem was something you learned last year. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Now that only works on 90 degree triangles. So if you're presented with a 90 degree triangle, and um, you've been given two sides, you'll be able to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so look for that 90 degree triangle, look for horizontal lines that meet vertical lines to create a 90 degree angle, and you can use Pythagorean theorem to find sides. But you have to be given two sides. Next up, we've got our trig ratios. So the three primary trig ratios, excuse me, trig ratios we're using are sine, cos, and tan. Okay, if you are given one angle and one side, you'll be able to find another side. And you can see that in the formula. If I'm given the sine of theta, so I'm given theta as an angle, and then I'm given one side, like the opposite, you're going to be able to solve for the other side, the hypotenuse. Okay? Then it's uh, similar whenever you find an angle, so similar whenever you find an angle, um, you'd have to be given two sides. So again, you need two pieces of information. Um, for instance, let's say tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. You would have to be given the opposite and the adjacent so you could find theta. And then when you hit tan theta in your calculator, you have to press shift. You hit shift tan, and that's key. So anytime you find an angle, um, you're not hitting tan of the angle, you're hitting shift, or some calculators say second, or maybe inverse. Okay? And trig ratios only work on 90 degree triangles. So then we went further and we said, well, let's open this up to any triangle. And the first law we looked at was the sine law. And sine law works on really any triangles, but let's stick to ones that are non-90. Because if you ever see a 90 degree triangle, you'll want to use Pythagorean theorem or trig ratios. The first version of the sine law is one where you find sides, so it would look like this. And to find a side, you would have to be given one side and two angles. So here's a little example, and we can go through um, go through it to see how we would use the um, the law. So if we're given one side, so here we're given side ten, that could be our B, um, and two two angles. Okay, so we have A's angle and B's angle. Okay, we're going to be able to solve using sine law for side A. So you have to have that one side that has a corresponding angle across from it, so 10 and angle B here of 20 degrees. And then as long as you have another angle, you can find his corresponding side. Okay, so now if we're trying to find an angle with sine law, um, you'd have to be given two sides and one angle. So in this little example here, we're given this side here of 10 and this side here of 20, and we have an angle. So let's see how we would fit that into the sine law. All right, so sine law is written a little differently. You put the sine of angle A on top over side A, and then it equals the same pattern over here, sine B over B, and then sine C over side C. Okay, so if we're trying to find sine, all right, in this case, B, so we're trying to find him, all right, so we don't have him, uh, but we do have his side, so we have side B. Then you look for any other corresponding pair of sine and angle to be complete. And we do have that. We have sine A's angle, 
and we have a, so you have sine a and a, so therefore you would be able to solve um, really easily for sine b. So you would be able to solve for sine b if you would only use this part of the sine law. Okay, and we've done a lot of sine law in previous lessons. Um, so this is the setup here. Okay, the last law we looked at is cosine law. And cosine law, um, there's really many ways you'll see it written, but we sort of said, let's stick to one way. And here it is here. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a times b times cos c. And let's start by finding a side. So to find a side with cosine law, here's what you would need. You'd have to be given two sides and one angle, but it's a very specific setup. So have a look at this triangle here. And you see there's sides 10, 12, an angle of 25 here, and we want to find side C. And what I've been calling this is the following. So you see how angle 25 is almost like sandwiched between 10 and 12? And then angle 25's opposite, or his corresponding side, is side C. Well, that's what you want to look for. So this side C would go in the formula right here as the C squared. And then the 25 degrees is your angle. So you'd put that here. All right. And then the sandwiching pieces, I call it sandwiching because it's almost like 10 and 12 sandwich that angle. We said in previous lessons that they go in for the A, the B, and then they get repeated again under that A and that B. All right. So if I were to read how this formula gets filled in, it would be the following. C squared equals, now we do our sandwiching, 10 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 10 times 12 cos of 25 degrees. All right. So the sandwich is what we look for. We can also use cosine law to find an angle. And I find this the easiest one to spot. Because if you want to find an angle and you're using cosine law, Remember, cosine law is meant for non-90 degree triangles. So if you're given a non-90 degree triangle, there's no 90 degree angle, no right angle, and you see a triangle where three sides are given, all three, 10, 12, and 9 are the three given sides, all right, you're going to be able to use cosine law. And again, you look for sandwiching. You sort of say, I want to find angle C, and he's sandwiched by 10 and 12. Okay, so that sandwiching effect is key. So how would I put these numbers into the cosine law? Well, let's review because we did see this in a previous lesson. Okay, so we're trying to find angle C. So we would have to put that here. Then this is little c. Remember, side C is opposite angle C. So you would put that here. Then you follow the sandwich approach I've been talking about, and your 10 and your 12 fall in for a squared, b squared, and a and b here. So the whole thing would read 9 squared equals 10 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 10 times 12 cosine of c. You'll do the math on this, follow the approach we took in the other lessons, and when it comes down to the end, I wrote shift here, because to get c, angle c here unlocked, you will have to hit shift on your calculator. Okay? It's similar to when you found the angle in sine law, you had to hit shift. And it's even similar when you find the angle with Sokotoa, you have to hit shift. So anytime you find an angle, you're hitting shift cos or shift tan or shift sine. Okay? So keep this sheet with you as a guide, okay, as a tool to help you um, decide which trig formula you would use to solve. Um, the different applications we're going to look at now. All right, everyone, now that this note's complete, you would have noticed that on the second page with that download, um, there were some examples to try. So I'm going to take them up now. All right, so keep your, um, your note with you, this one here, so you can refer to it as we make decisions as to which trig approach to take to solve the given question. So in example one, let's take a look at the triangle. First thing I notice, I could get that third angle. 
So I have 56 and 43. I'm going to find that that third angle that's missing is 81 degrees. If you can get quick information, go for it. Okay, so let's try and find side A in this question. What would you do? All right. This is not a 90 degree triangle, so you're not going to use Pythagorean theorem, and you're not going to use trig ratios, so SOHCAHTOA. That leaves you with sine law and cosine law. Now, if you want to find side A with, um, let's start with cosine law. So if you want to find side A with cosine law, see if you have his opposite angle, and you do. But then you look to see if you have him sandwiched. And remember, you need that sandwiching effect. And we don't, because we only have 38 centimeters. And over here, we don't know that side. Okay, so it's not trig ratios, it's not Pythagorean theorem, it's not cosine law. Let's try sine law. So if we want to find a side, grab your formula that's for sides, okay, and let's see if we can make this work. So it would be A, okay, over sine 56. And then we have to see if that's equal to um, a ratio that's totally known. So let's look for, okay, well, another side. There's side B. And do we have his corresponding angle? We do, 81. So that's what we're going to want to use. 38 over sine 81 degrees. So that's a sine law. Okay, let's have a look at question two. If you're noticing, I'm not going to solve these. We're just helping you make decisions as to which trig approach to take. Okay, so let's take a look at example two. We want to find this case, we're going to go for side A. Have a look at that triangle. Is it a 90 degree triangle? We have no way of knowing. We only have the 80 degree angle here. You can't go and assume that any of these are certain values. So if we want to find side A, we can't use Pythagorean theorem and we can't use trig ratios. That leaves us with sine law and cosine law. And if you look closely enough, you see that side A has his corresponding angle of 80, and he does have the parts we need for the sandwich. And the sandwich, uh, we're sandwiching angle 80 with sides 14 and 22, which will allow us to calculate side A. So this is where you're gonna wanna use cosine law, okay? I'm just gonna write the general law out Okay, and remember, the law is kind of like a way to tell you how to put the numbers into it as opposed to this C means this C over here, and that A means that A. I don't view it like that. I say to myself, I want my unknown here, and my unknown is this A. I need to square it. And his corresponding angle is 80, so I write 80 degrees over here, and I'm going to take his cosine. And what goes in here is parts of the sandwich. Okay, so just go in order. 14 squared plus 22 squared minus 2 times 14 times 22. All right, and you're able to solve that with cosine law. All right, you can even right away just write the law down starting here. You don't have to write the original law out if you're comfortable at this point. Okay, example three. Let's solve for angle A. So if we're going to solve for angle A in example three, let's look at the triangle. Well, it's not 90 degrees, and we have no way of knowing that, even though this may look 90 degrees. So assume it's not. That rules out primary trig ratio, Sokotoa, and it rules out Pythagorean theorem. You wouldn't even use Pythagorean theorem, because that only finds sides. We're off to find angle A. And if you remember, the only formula that, if you're given three sides, lets you find an angle is cosine law. So here you're going to want to use cosine law. Okay? So we don't even need to solve it. We just want to say to ourselves, it's clear that with three sides given and a non-90 degree triangle, we need cosine law to solve for angle A. Okay, example four. 
Let's solve for angle A. And we have no way of knowing that this is a 90 degree triangle, so it's not Sokotoa and it's not Pythagorean theorem. Now, if we have angle A, we have the option using sine law and cosine law. Let's start with sine law. So let's just test it. So let's say sine A, and I want to find that angle. I know I need to put his side underneath it, and his side that goes to that is 26. Then you look for another angle that corresponds with the side, and we have that. 53 corresponds with 37. And right away, this has revealed itself, and we need to use sine law. Okay? So that one's a sine law. All right, real quick, have a look at these triangles down here. Okay, number five. It awfully, it sure looks like a 90 degree triangle, okay? And the actual fact is this handout's missing the 90 degree. I meant to put that there. So this is a 90 degree triangle, but I also want to use this point, this moment right now to highlight, do look for the 90 degree symbol and, uh, and then it gives away the triangle right away as a 90 degree. You can use Sokotoa or Pythagorean theorem. Here I would 100% use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, C squared is 123 degrees squared plus 65 squared, okay? Um, let's say you have a ladder and it's leaning up against a wall. Well, the wall and the floor will always make a 90 degrees. So when you draw these triangles out, you'll draw a ladder, draw a wall, draw the floor. Then you're allowed to infer that this would make a 90 degree. It's not directly given you in the diagram, but you know the physical nature of leaning a ladder against the wall makes it so this is 90 degrees, okay? Example six, you wanna find angle B. It's a 90 degree triangle. You're gonna to wanna to use Sokotoa, okay? So we were saying back in those lessons that angle B's opposites over here, his adjacents here, at this point, you realize O and A are part of TOA, okay? So you're going to want to use tan. You're going to want to use the tan ratio here. Let's look at some applications now. So this is that second worksheet you downloaded from my website, sine law and cosine law worksheet number eight. Okay, so read the example, and when you're done, um, We'll take it up together and make a decision as to which approach to take. Pause and do that now. Okay. What we're out to find is side AC. And AC in this diagram is B. So how would we first find B? Well, don't assume this is a 90 degree triangle. Check to see what this missing angle is. Because you know every triangle adds to 180. Okay, so I'm going to do that right now. 180, subtract 45, subtract 55. Okay, so the missing angle here is 80 degrees. So we know we have to use sine law or cosine law. All right, to find side B, let's try sine law first. So just test it. B, okay, he'd have to go over his opposite angle with a sine, so sine 55. Great. Next up, you have to find a side that has this corresponding angle, and we have that. Side 6 has this corresponding angle of 80. Okay, so great, we're going to use sine law. Okay, now what about side BC. All right, well, in this diagram, um, BC is little side A. Great. So what could we do? Well, again, we don't use trig ratios or Pythagorean theorem. We have to use sine law or cosine law. Okay. Now, we would have an answer at this point for side B if we followed through on this calculation, right? So you'd have a known value right here, which means you could use cosine law because you do have the sandwich effect now. 
Okay? You could use cosine law and you could do the following. A squared and his angle is 45 degrees. Okay? And then the sides that we put into the cosine law, the sides that are sandwiching 45, would be, remember, you would know what b is. I don't know right now because I didn't do the work, but b squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times whatever b is and 6. And you will find side a with this calculation. Okay? <clears throat> the other option that will work, too, is you could sine law this again. You could again do a sine law. And if you sine law, I would do the following. So A, he has his angle, okay? And so we're going to write A over sine 45 degrees. And use the exact same corresponding pair again. So 6, who's this side, over sine of 80. Okay? And you can solve for side A. And you will get the same two answers if you do this work. Um, you have to. And that's, that's always going to happen. Okay? It's safer to use the sine law approach because if you look at this, we're not using B, the B that we calculated. We're using values that were given to us. So you're not introducing a potential error if you happen to make a mistake with B here. So this is a safer approach, but they both work. For question two about chuck wagon, um, this is one I'd like you to try for yourself. Actually, this entire worksheet is your practice for this. And I'd like you to practice selecting the right uh, approach, the right trig formulas, and uh, then doing the calculations and getting the correct answers. So at the end of the question here in parentheses are the answers. Okay, so I'm going to do a few more, and this entire worksheet is yours to practice. All right, number three. Read number three. Pause to do that, come back when you're ready, and let's think about which trick approach to take. Okay, for Sandy Beach, the question ultimately asks us to find little side C over here. And uh, you're given an angle of 70 degrees and two sides that are known. And I immediately, after uh, enough experience with this, I immediately see if that if I want side C, and I look across from it, and I have his angle, I look for the sandwich. And I have it there. Okay, so I can set up a cosine law. Um, cosine law wants you to have two sides and an angle, and that's sandwich. Okay? Not a 90 degree triangle, there's nothing to tell you that. So you know you were supposed to use sine law or cosine law, but I right away saw the sandwich. And to set that up, it looks like this. So the side I want to find is C. It's squared. The very end of that formula, I'll take the cosine, 70 degrees, okay? Then you put your sandwiching sides into the formula. And you just have to remember the proper way of doing that. So it's 3 squared plus 2.5 squared. Then it's just minus 2 times those numbers, times cos 70. Okay? And you can immediately do that calculation and determine side C, which is the width of lake AB in the diagram. All right, read number four about the hockey net. Pause and come back, give some thought. Well, what do you think? We have a triangle, and it's this one here. Okay, side's 12, this side's 13, that side's two. We Got three sides given, and the only one that'll help us with that is cosine law. Okay, they want you to find this angle, and you just have to set it up correctly, all right? So if you want this angle and he's unknown, okay, maybe give it a letter. Why not call it capital C, okay? So here's the approach. Capital C angle is opposite side 2, okay? So he's the one that gets squared, 2 squared, 
And over here, you'll have to find the cosine of side C. And this is where, now you look for that sandwich I mentioned. Okay, and you put those two sides in accordingly. 12 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 12 times 13 cos C. And then you go forward solving this to find angle C um, with the right steps we learned in previous lessons. And ultimately, you will have to hit shift cos to get the answer for angle C. All right, everyone. So that's enough. I think it's your turn to try this. You'll only learn best if you try this for yourself. Follow through on the entire worksheet here and do the ones, um, especially the ones that we haven't looked at. And make sure you try and calculate final answers, which are shown here in brackets, for each question, okay? So there's questions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and on the next page, all the way to 10. Best of luck. Bring your questions to class, and see you soon.